I, I just want to say, uh, you know, I met with a lot of the guys this morning, and they came through, and I can't say enough good things about this group of guys. They're, they're all great guys. They came in. They worked hard. You know, they played hurt. They played. They all stayed together really during a, a pretty tough time this year. You know, we started off hot. There were highs and lows this year. And, you know, to end the season, you know, we're 5-12. and 12, And those guys played hard and stayed together. So I appreciate everything they, that they did. And, you know, just, just the talks with them. They're all really good people. So I want to thank them. Uh, with that, I'll open it up. Scott, you have a question? Uh, do you feel like there's any chance that you guys could bring Cam Newton back at quarterback? Yeah, I had a good talk with uh, Cam this morning. And what we're going to do is uh, we're going to sit back, kind of evaluate the position we need to see about the OC. But the one thing about Cam is, like, I had this view of him from the outside. And to meet him, I've never been more impressed with a player. His, uh, his leadership and what he did uh, during a really tough time. You know, we're, uh, you know, all over the place at quarterback with uh, the injuries and different things. And, uh, you know, even when it was some of those tough days in the locker room after a loss, Cam brought the energy every day. He showed great leadership. He was positive. Uh, I just, like I told him, I was really impressed with him as a, as a person. So, yes, uh, I think we're open to it. We have to see what the, what, you know, how it goes, uh, what he's thinking, what we're thinking, how it all fits together. And uh, we'll come up with a plan. But, yes, we are open to it. A year ago, I asked you, uh, what are you looking for at a quarterback? And you said, a closer. A closer. Are you still, is, is Sam Donald that quarterback for you? I think Sam's still developing. We have, we have to help him. You know, everybody looks at the quarterback position just as the individual. There's so many other factors that go into it, the receivers, the offensive line. Um, there's, there, he had a lot of leakage. He had a lot of pressure in his face, and it's tough to play the position if, if, no matter who you are if there's pressure in your face. So we need to give him a, a, a we need to help him in that situation. Uh, he's still developing. He's still a young quarterback. He's been through several offensive coordinators. Um, you know, to say, to answer that, I don't know if he's there yet. He's going to be. I think we're going to work with him to get there. But we're open uh, uh, to the idea of him being that. Scott, this is a little more maybe philosophical than concrete today. But between Sam's option and all the trades you guys made, were you maybe a little more aggressive than you would have preferred to have been a year ago? You know, each uh, each trade or transaction that we make is, you know, based on the actual, um, you know, action at that time. We do have a long-term plan. I mean, th th we want to build this piece by piece and brick by brick. But if there's a player available that we think can come in and help us right away and we see the value in it, we will make that move. Um, we're going to be aggressive by nature. That's just kind of my nature. But we have to be smart about it. We have to treat our draft picks, you know, like gold. I mean, basically, that's how we do it. We're not just going to throw them away. You know, I, I think if you look at um, Stephon Gilmore, that's probably more of a, a short-term, like he was coming in to compete and help us day one. But when you look at, say, C.J. Henderson or Daryl Johnson, we look at those guys as uh, draft picks in this draft class. I mean, th those are young guys that we can build with. I'm excited about Daryl. I think he's going to get stronger. Uh, he'll be a great special teams player. And C.J. is a freakishly talented player that we're going to keep developing. So we consider them as part of this draft class from the picks that we used. So uh, it, we, do have to, we do have to have, be smart about how we use our draft picks. Um, we can't always, I take the mindset we can always create draft picks, but we do have to be smart about it. Uh, do you feel like it's possible to address both quarterback and offensive line in this offseason, or, or will you have to choose one or the other, just on the outlook of what's out I think there? it's so early right now. Um, our focus is going to be, you know, building that offensive line. We have to get stout up front, both lines, you know, offensive and defensive line. Uh, but we're not going to be blind to other spots either. We're not going to be blind to the defense. We're not going to be blind to the quarterback position. But we absolutely know we have to fix the offensive line. We can't have all this leakage. That's going to help the quarterback play. So, yeah. That said, how aggressive do you think you'll be in the quarterback market, trade or free agents? I think a lot of it will come down to, you know, how we evaluate this over the next couple of weeks, the new offensive coordinator, uh, what it looks like in free agency when we build our draft board or our free agent board, what the draft looks like. The one thing we don't want to do at the quarterback position is just to force something to get a quarterback in here. We, we need to build this the right way. We need to build this up front. And with that, I think we'll have better uh, quarterback play long term. 
So it really sounds like, Scott, that the, the offensive line is priority one. Uh, absolutely. I think, you know, both sides of the ball, you know, but offensive line, that's, that's how you build a team. You know, when we came in here, when I interviewed a year ago, it's building it on the offensive and defensive lines. So that's, that will be our priority. Uh, we're always open to looking for quarterback and adding competition. So, I mean, we're not going to, like, not look at that position. But when you build a football team, you build it up front, and that's the way we're going to do it. Those lines, Brady and Deontay, I mean, Brady got more time than Deontay, but how do they fit into the long-term picture there? I think uh, Brady did a great job this year. I mean, he really came on. He, you know, he's put in a tough situation where he had to play four different spots this year. And as a rookie, that's really tough to do. One, from a learning standpoint. Two, from a technique standpoint. You know, you're playing on the right side, left side. You know, your, your footwork's different on both. But I thought once we put him out at left tackle, he did a pretty good job. Um, you know, I know a lot of people talk about arm length at, at tackle. The one thing you can do is if you have compensating factors, if you have quick feet, if you take, you know, if you have a quick set and take good angles, if you're efficient with your hands and keep your elbows in and play out front, you, you can get away with it. I mean, there's a lot of 34 inch arm guys that play out here and play so close to their chest. It doesn't really matter. Your functional length is out here. So uh, Brady can do that. And then Deontay, I thought he, we saw some really good flashes, his ability to play with power last night move guys off the line of scrimmage. For a bigger guy, he can get to the second level. He can adjust. So uh, I'm excited to see more of, of Deontay. I think those are two good pieces to build with. Is it fair to say that Brady perhaps changed some minds in the building about his ability to play left tackle? I think he just got the opportunity to show it. You know, uh, He was forced to play different positions early because of injuries and guys in and out of the lineup. Um, but I think once, he, uh, once, once we put him over there at left tackle, he showed the ability to take and run with it. And so we're hoping he does do that. Uh, the good thing about Brady, he does have that versatility. If he needs to play left guard, he can do that. If he needs to play right guard, he can do that. And I think we feel like he's a piece that we have moving forward that can start for us and play at a good high level. Say, say you brought Cam back in the mix with Darnold already committed here. Yeah. Do you see that as an open competition there? Or do you see I think it's so early to tell. Yeah. You know, uh, you know, Sam, Sam will be back. And Sam, you know, Sam, when we protect him and he gets the ball out quick, he looks like a good NFL quarterback. It's just it's so hard to tell because there's so much pressure in his face so often. And then when you're playing from behind and defenses are pinning their ears back, he gets put in a really tough position. But when it's early in the game, the first drives, we're going right down the field and scoring. And uh, so he's shown a lot of good things. As far as uh, Cam, you know, we'll see how it all, we'll see how it all plays out. Scott, um, given the benefit of hindsight, was it a mistake to pick up Darnold's fifth-year option before he ever threw a pass for you? Yeah, it, that's so hard because I, I, I never want to say anything's a mistake because it's not fair to the player. It's, uh, Sam comes in, he works his tail off every day. He studies. He's here late. So I, I think that's uh, probably a little unfair. I can tell you like what I was thinking during that time. Um, we had committed, you know, some resources to that position. We committed a second and fourth round pick and, and another round uh, pick in there. We wanted to show some confidence in him, and we thought he'd come in and play uh, at a consistent level. So that's why we picked that up. And if you look at that, it was, it's the $18 million option, $18 plus million option for this year. It's $22 million over two years. And you're talking about if that's your starting quarterback and you're trying to build your defense, you're trying to build your offense, that's how we looked at it, is allocating money at, at that point. That's why we picked it up. Um, and, you know, the story's not written on Sam. It, he's still developing. You know, it'll be interesting to see with the new OC, a rebuilt offensive line, what it's going to look like. But Scott, did that contract in any way prohibit you from doing things that you want to do this offseason, either at that position <laughs> with Dante Jackson or elsewhere? Yeah, so, you know, I've talked about how we have – money allotted in different spots. Uh, we're going to have to be creative. You know, one thing about Samir, he's really good at, at working cap numbers. We can do some things, sign some players, spread the money out over time to make up for this year. So, yeah, it makes it a little more difficult, but we can, we can manage the cap in a way where it doesn't prohibit us from doing uh, too much. I wish I knew this, but I'm just going to ask anyway. When you pick up Sam's fifth year option, what's the deadline on that? Like, it, was, it was the day after that draft, so the first day of the draft. I think it was the next day. I think I believe that was the deadline. That's why we picked it up at that point. It wasn't like we could wait till 
we saw him play during the season this year. It was back then. Okay. I want to make sure I'm there. Thanks, Ben. Who, if you're able to say, is DJ Moore a priority getting him re-signed and uh, extended? Yeah, DJ Moore is one of the foundation pieces on our team. Yeah, you know, I talked to him this morning. Um, again, you know, it's just going through the value, valuation period. But DJ, for everything he does, the toughness, the playing through injuries, everything that he brings to our team, that's the type of guy that you would like to bring back. It just has to make sense for both of us. Uh, but I'm hopeful, and I think he's hopeful. We'll just see how it plays out. That's the same uh, of, of Brian. Do you anticipate picking up fifth-year option on his deal? Or Yeah, you know. Yeah, we'll address that, I think, when we get there. I don't want to say too much too early, but Brian is also like a foundation piece on this team. He's one of the – he's a Pro Bowl player. I mean, he's he's a special pass rusher, and you want to keep those guys around as long as you can. Scott, you're in a unique position having Dante and Gilmore, two pretty accomplished guys at the same position up at the same time. Does that almost become an either-or situation with those two? Uh, you know what? I haven't even started negotiations with them. Samir and I haven't even really talked numbers yet. So I can't say. I'd love for them both to be here because I think they're both at, uh, valuable players for us. You know, um, Dante, I thought, had one of his best years since he's been in the NFL this year. And uh, Stefan is so smart, and he's so good for that room. And he, he, can, he has a really special skill set. So I don't know what those numbers are going to be yet, but uh, we'll work through that. Do you think Stefan had a certain value? I mean, knowing you don't have a guarantee for him next year, I mean, was it still worth – that pick to have him here this year? I think he's done so much with those young players in that room. When you look at, you know, J.C. Horn, who he has, who he has a really good relationship with, um, from C.J. Henderson. Those guys, even though he's a really quiet guy, you know, I know you guys all know him in the room, he's really mild-mannered, quiet. He has a nice presence to him. He's really, really smart. And, you know, coaches can teach you so much. They can teach you the X's and O's. But when you have a guy like Stefan who can take, teach you the nuances of the game, the little, you know, tricks of the trade, the cheats here and there. He, uh, he's valuable uh, when it comes to that as well. So it's not just the player, but it's actually the person you're adding to that room. Kind of to that point, veteran leadership in the locker room is so important. When you bring in the OC, though, is there, do you want someone that has NFL experience that's maybe called plays at this level that has been a head coach, or is there criteria like that as well? Yeah, I'm going to let, um, you know, that's Matt Staff, and he's going he's gonna to lead that process if, if um, you know, I'll, I'll give some input if he if he wants that. Um, I think there's value in having a veteran coordinator, someone that's called it. Uh, it really just comes down to the right fit for our coaching staff and for Matt and uh, for our team. Got early assessment on the quarterback class in this draft, in particular, Pickett. Yeah, uh, a little early for me. I've seen them all play on, on tape. The hard part, especially at that position, it comes down to the person, the makeup of the person, the competitor. And until I talk to him or until our staff talks to him, until Matt and our OC talks to him, I can't really say. I've never talked to, to Pickett. I went to the game here when they played. Uh, really impressed with the competitor, just watching him play. Uh, watched his arm strength in pregame. All that checked the box. Uh, but there's, it's still a long way till the draft. So I, I, I don't want to commit too much without really talking to the guy. Yeah, has Matt talked oh, talk to you about him? Like Matt, obviously, Matt has a pretty Yeah, good yeah he, he recruited him. That, everything fr from what we're hearing, the reports from our scouts, uh, the visits they've had with him, the people that have been around him, everything's kind of checking the box. Like, this guy sounds like, you know, the makeup you want at the position. But again, that's so far away, I don't know. How likely do you think it is that Hassan Reddick will be on this team next year? I would love for Hassan to be here, and we talked about it this morning. Um, again, uh, I've got to talk to the agent. We haven't even started negotiations yet. I don't know what his expectations are. I know, you know, we have a limited amount of money that we that we can spend. How we, you know, commit. You know, we have buckets for like Dante and other players, but how this fits, it'll be interesting once the numbers start coming in. And again, like our our. Emphasis is going to be solidifying the offense and defensive lines. We need to get big bodies. We need to get tough, gritty guys up front that, you know, when it comes to December, we can run the ball. When it's when it's third and two, we can count on them getting pushed at the line of scrimmage and running the ball. We asked Matt about potential staff changes. Anything on your end, uh, scouting staff or anything your uh, 
hierarchy? So in, in our uh, situation, we're about halfway through the season. You know, the season's ending in football. We're just beginning the meeting stages, and I'm still learning. We had some turnover this last year. I'm still learning some of the newer scouts. Uh, you know, last year with COVID, we had some meetings, but a lot of them have been Zoom. I think we just need to be in the room together, and I think this will be a big year for that. Scott, can you give us an idea of what you do have to spend free and see, bro? I was, I, the last I checked, I think it was around 28. I think I had to look. In terms of Christian, I know you said that you want to be in on every single trade possibility, no matter what's going on in the NFL. Does that also include fielding calls about Christian? Because there's been reports about that. Yeah, uh, so that was, a, that was a good talk I had with Christian this morning. I think we sat there. 30, 45 minutes, and we addressed all those things. I told them what was the truth and what was not the truth, and kind of everything that had played out. I think there's a report back in November that we were actively trying to trade him, and that was, that was not true. What I did tell him, though, is, hey, listen, as a GM, I'll take any call. You call and make any offer you want. That doesn't mean we're going to do it. doesn't mean we're shopping you. I'll listen. I look at Christian as the foundation piece on this team, one of those building blocks. We're a better team when he's on the field. We're he, uh, you know, he's one of the elite players in the NFL, and I told, yeah, I would love for him to be here, but I will never not take a call. I th if somebody calls and offers something crazy, yeah, it, you you would look at it, but uh, I have no, there's no intentions right now of trading Christian McCaffrey.